traverse or to throw out the case. The defense has been going all out to destroy the testimony of key witnesses. It's claiming the state's evidence is littered with improbabilities and inconsistencies. Diwani has been accused of conspiring to murder his newlywed wife Annie while they were on honeymoon in Cape Town in 2010. Our reporter Annika Larson is outside the Western Cape High Court joined by another colleague of ours Leanne Jensen who's been covering this case right from day one. Annika good morning once more to you. We've seen the defense really yesterday arguing very strongly as they tore into the state witnesses that this case does not belong to, to a court. That's right, Dan. Well, again, live to you at the Western Cape High Court. And uh, you're 100% right uh, in, in that analysis. And I just want to give you a, an idea of, of the mood here in Cape Town, the front page of the Cape Times. Star witness torpedoed. And they're talking about uh, Zola Tongo, the, uh, the tour guide who allegedly conspired with Shrian Dewani uh, to have his wife, Annie Dewani, murdered. And uh, that Zola Tongo, uh, Francois Fonsale, for the defense, has said that uh, lacks all credibility, should be completely disregarded as a witness. In fact, he called the state's case a cesspit of contradictions. And uh, with me is Leanne Jansen to talk us through that. A cesspit of contradictions. Would you describe Zola Tongo's evidence as that, Leanne? Well, Zola Tongo wasn't a particularly great witness on, on the stand. There were several contradictions in, in his stories, his statements given to police under oath, and what he had then testified in court. Uh, Zola Tongo put those down as mistakes and said that over the, the past couple of years, the, the, the sequence of events was replayed in his mind, and that's how the facts then fell into place. But Francho van is having none of that. He also said that Tongo's evidence is of such a poor quality that it cannot be relied on. And he didn't just rip into Tongo's testimony, he also ripped into the testimony of the other state witnesses, Mondo um, Mbalombo uh, and Mziwa Madoda Kwabe. Um, Francia Vancell has again told the court that there is no way that the late Kulile Mgeni was the trigger man. Mgeni was convicted as the trigger man in 2012, but all the evidence points to Kwabe as, as the shooter. In the, the web part of his glove of, of the left hand, there was gunshot residue there. Um, there was also a glove mark on the left rear door outside, and all this now points to him as, as the person who fired that fatal shot. One of those uh, alleged co-conspirators actually admitted to lying under oath. Yes, Mondo Mbalombo, when he took the stand in, in the trial against Shri and Diwani, he said that he had lied under oath twice in two statements, his Section 204 statement, as well as um, in, when he testified in the trial against Holy Lem Geni. This time he says, but now I am telling the truth. But one, what Fonsele is saying, but why should we believe him now? He said the same story in 2012 and back in 2011. So you don't know where the truth lies. You don't know how many lies are being told. And and that was exactly his argument yesterday. Thank you so much, Leon. Oh, last question. Um, you did see the family yesterday of Annie Dewani, and you spoke briefly to them. Uh, how are they dealing with this discharge application? The, the family of, of Annie Diwani, uh, they're holding up. It, it seems like the wind has been knocked out of their sails. I also spoke with um, Annie's uncle, Ashok Hindocha, from Sweden. He told me that now is Shrian's last chance, you know, to tell his side of the story. He always said that he wants to get well and clear his name in South Africa, and now they, he has that chance and he's not taking it. They want him to take the stand. I, I think that would be, um, thank you, Leanne. I think that would really uh, help the family, the Hindutja family, uh, if Shri Ndawani were to take the stand and possibly answer some questions that really are quite pertinent to this trial, Dan. And you can follow Leanne on LA underscore Jansen, all uh, capital letters, uh, because she really does tweet word for word of what's going on in court. And I think today really is going to be Operation Fight Back for the state. It will almost be like closing arguments for them because this is their possibly their last chance uh, to state their case to have Shrendawani convicted. Thank you very much, Annika. That's Annika Lassen and Leanne Jansen ahead of today's proceedings in the Diwani murder trial. Uh, just a reminder that Leanne will be live tweeting today's proceedings as Annika was telling us there. Her Twitter